Hey everybody, it's Mark again with Exotic Car Play Place. Today I'm going to talk about the E60 M5 once again and why it gets such a bum steer. Why are these cars only exchanging hands for as low as $15,000 today? 15 grand, 20 grand gets you a fairly decent E60 M5 today. And I know there's been a lot of talk about some of the failures that you see with these cars. The SMG transmission issues, the differential stuff, not to mention a lot of the engine failures that are potentially associated with the E60 M5. Now, what are those engine failures? The big ones, of course, in terms of the actual engine itself, really are the rod bearings. Everything else is ancillary. It's basically bolted on top. So we're talking about things such as the idle actuators and things like that. The core engine itself, the only real weak point consistently are the rod bearings. But here today I'm really to talk about defending the E60 M5. Why is it so cheap these days? I'd have to expect they're going to go up in value at some point. But more to the point, why are they so cheap? After all, we all forgive a lot of the other car makers for making a lot of mistakes in the past. We can name just a pile of vehicles, for example, engines that were produced by Ford, for example, a 5.4 liter V8 engine that had the cam phasers that failed every single time. It was virtually a guaranteed issue on those vehicles. Cam phasers, the timing goes out and you get a knocking noise that resulted in some pretty expensive failure repairs. That's one example. Another example is Nissan's very, very well-known 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine with its pre-cat ceramic that would disintegrate and basically push product into the engine, thus creating premature wear, and you'd wind up with oil and coolant consumption and therefore sometimes an absolute catastrophic failure. Certainly, at the very least, a premature wear on that car. So that would write that engine off real quick. And we talk about another one. How about another one from the Germans? The 1.8 liter turbo gas engine that Audi used, Volkswagen used. That was until, it wasn't until after and, and the car had some miles on it that they quickly realized that owners would start utilizing normal Dino oil instead of synthetic, which was actually recommended. And that would thus accelerate sludge formation and quickly deteriorate the engine. You'd have reduced pickup on, on the oil pump circuits and you'd wind up with an engine that started to fail or catastrophically over time. And then we talk about Chrysler's 2.7 liter V6 motor, a very well-known engine. Those also had an issue. Sludge formation was, was quickly built up in that engine. Another problem was the water pump shaft seal, which if it wound up catastrophically letting go, you'd wind up filling the crankcase with antifreeze and thus at times potentially seizing an engine. Throw that motor out or at the very least some expensive repairs to get that engine turned around. And then we'd talk about another German car by Mercedes for example. The infamous or famous M272 engine series which had balance shaft issues. Those would go away. There's, there's some gears that weren't up to snuff. They weren't up to duty cycle. They would wear out and you'd usually wind up with a catastrophic failure there, which could, of course, translate into repair bills in excess, well in excess of $4,000 US to turn that around. And then we talk about one of my other favorite cars right over here, the Lamborghini Gallardo. And those were famous for lunching clutches for, you know, five to 10,000 kilometers. When these cars first came out in 2004, some of the early models, people didn't really understand the best way to drive them to conserve the clutches, but also Lamborghini provided a really weak first generation clutch, which went away in about 5,000 to 10,000 kilometers. Talk about a poor design, what can you say? That was also a poor construction. Then we talk about Subarus with weak head gaskets, Toyota 3 liter V6 engines with head gaskets that were weak as well, it would start burning antifreeze. How about Dodge trucks? Dodge, all Dodge vehicles, for example, minivans, the trucks, some of the cars, the transmissions were built in certain ways that they would fail. Apparently there was parts on the inside. I spoke with a transmission expert here recently and there's a, a style, a, a form in which a lot of them fail. 
there's some kind of retaining part that's on a rotating shaft within the transmission it turns and apparently it backs out and as it starts to back out that pin starts to eat away at at other parts and thus winds up taking out the entire transmission over time and they never lasted very long so that was another weak point for Dodge and I give you another great example let's talk about a higher-end car let's talk Porsche I mean I've always loved Porsches and there's no question about it none of these cars I'm here to criticize really all I'm making is a comparison to say why does the E60 get such a bum rap there's a lot of mainstream vehicles that have been designed in such a way that or you know maybe poorly designed in such a way that have allowed catastrophic failures or early deterioration and the 911 is such a car look at the Porsche 996's Porsche 997's both of those had IMS issues same with the Boxster they had IMS bearing issues if that IMS bearing let go poof you wind up with catastrophic parts and particles throughout the oil system often that whole engine was lunged as well if you're talking about the 997 cars and even more afflicted in the Carrera S's but the 997's often had an issue with washing in the cylinder walls and you'd wind up with scoring in the cylinders and you'd basically toast the engine sadly enough you didn't have liners so you'd pretty much have to chuck that engine away unfortunately Porsche had a bit of an issue with the 997 motors and had to come up with a resolution for the 991 series which followed Porsche has also had their share of issues of course you look even historically Porsche's had issues with their rubber center clutches they've had issues with their 2.7 liter flat six in the uh, early 2.7 cars from the late 70s those cars with the magnesium cases would pull head studs you'd wind up with bad compression leaks and other kind of issues so even Porsche is subject to failure this is not a critique on the brand again I love Porsches I love Lambos Dodges hey I have a Dodge pickup truck a lot of these are great vehicles what I'm simply doing is defending the E60 yes it is not perfect yes there are potential failures and yes it's expensive to repair but you get past a couple of those consistent repairs get your head wrapped around that be prepared for it budget for it or even get your get a, uh, a proper extended warranty to cover that and you can have a ton of fun with an amazing supercar like this the E60 M5 leaves nothing for want these cars are amazing performers they're full of luxury items and they look great too so everybody that's all I really wanted to say was hey guys give the E60 a break if you're not a lover of them already take a closer look I honestly I think there's a lot more going for it than that's going against it so anyway I hope you liked the video everybody we'll make sure we talk to you on the next one don't forget to share like and subscribe tap that subscribe button below if you're not already a subscriber I'd love to see you guys on the next one many more videos like this many more great driving videos to follow as well talk to you guys on the next one see you then bye bye